Hey guys, Dr. Pikachu here, and welcome to a video I've been trying to make for a very long time, my Super Smash Bros. figure collection. We'll be going through in their fighter order, so what better place to start than with the SH Figure Arts Mario. I'm a big fan of this range and I wish they'd continued on for it longer. Well priced, nice sculpts, must have for any Smash Bros. figure collection. And to start us off with a bang, we've got our first bonus figure, the Fire Mario variant. I picked this up pretty cheap from Amazon at the start of the year, so they seem to be more available than the standard Mario currently is. The hands are also interchangeable, so you can even have regular Mario holding a fireball, just like you can in Smash. On to our first lower quality figure with Donkey Kong. I got this guy pre-owned off eBay to fill out the roster for my Club Nintendo Stop Motion series, in which you can find pretty much all of these figures in action, so make sure to check out the playlist at the end of the video. Just limited arm and leg articulation on DK, although you can spin his tie round, so style points? The hero of Hyrule next with Link. This is the Skyward Sword figure, so not his Smash Ultimate look. However, there's a cheaper Breath of the Wild World of Nintendo range figure, if that's what you're after. Big fan of this figure and Figma in general, although he didn't want to stand up on his own, so you can see the blue tack. Um, he didn't like spinning around, so maybe all those spin attacks over the years have gone to his head. Speaking of the World of Nintendo range, here's Samus, where you can definitely see the quality difference. You get what you pay for with these figures. She's also out of scale with Figma Link, just a bit too small sadly. There are some stunning Figma Samus figures, but I've yet to play a Metroid game, so couldn't warrant spending that much. Maybe someday. Next up we've got Mario's trusty green pal Yoshi. I really like the egg he comes with, but I wish it was a separate piece to the hand. They're connected, so you can't have the egg on the floor or like it's being thrown midair. My girlfriend's a big fan of Yoshi and wasn't happy when I exploded his head in one of my videos. Not strictly relevant, but I'm not one to turn down an opportunity to replay that clip. Plus I can use it to let you all know that his head does in fact come off. On to Nendoroid Kirby, this is one of my favourite figures full stop. The way they use magnets to pull this figure off is just incredible. He comes with a variety of different faces, but you know I had to go with the good old screaming curb face for this video. <coughs> jumping back to World of Nintendo, but with a massive jump in quality compared to the Samus. Fox McCloud. I love the sculpt on this guy, and he's truly one of the standouts of the range. Who'd have thought we'd ever get a Star Fox figures? Grabbed this guy off eBay in 2019, but sadly Falco's a lot harder to find for a good price. The hunt continues. Now for probably the definitive Pikachu figure in my eyes, I've yet to see one top this guy's sculpt. Uh, the obvious drawback here is that we only get some limited head rotation in the form of articulation, so posing is pretty one note and animating with him is similarly a bit of a struggle. Fighter number 9, Green Mario. Another from the SH Big Arts Mario range, and as such, he's perfectly in scale with his shorter brother. Although sadly, this can't be said of Bowser from that range. And a sad moment now, as we have to skip some characters for the first time in the video, and jump to number 12, Jigglypuff. And another one for the cheap on eBay and almost works with the scale group. Yeah, she's a lot bigger than she should be, but she grows in her final smash anyway, so it's good enough for me. On to the Melee roster, a very rare sight now with Jack Specific actually making a female action figure. World of Nintendo Peach actually works pretty well alongside the SH Figure Arts range. I wish her skin tone was more matte, but besides that I don't really think all that much more could be done with articulation. Now to Bowser and... yeah, I don't think the sky is in scale with the other figures. This is the Taito Bowser figure, and fun story I ordered this guy while quite sleep deprived and didn't realise it wasn't the one I was after. You can imagine my surprise when this massive box arrived at my door. But like a true artist, I took the L and wrote it into the video script anyway, and it's better off for it. Fighter number 19, Pichu, is one very close to my heart. I've had this little guy for over a decade now, and was always a big fan of Notchied Pichu, who sadly is now marooned in Pokemon Soul Silver on my DS, as Game Freak never let you trade him forward to any other games. I was so happy to see him as an alt costume in Ultimate that I made Pichu my main in that game. From one Pokemon to another, here's D-Arts Mario, although D-Arts is no longer a thing, so he's now sold as SH Fig Arts Mario, but I believe it's the exact same figure. The tail on this guy is my favourite part, and you can get some really great poses out of it. Mr. Game & Watch is a figure you won't be seeing in the typical Smash Bros figure collection video, as he's actually a specially commissioned custom of mine by Sacred Studios. He makes some amazing Smash Bros custom figures, so I'll be sure to link his channel at the end of the video for you guys to check out. On to Super Smash Bros. Brawl, my first Smash game, and funnily enough, Pit was actually my first high quality figure, followed by the Link Figma. I think my fondness for Figma started pretty early on. Now port Kid Icarus Uprising to the Switch please. Please? Dark Pit. Pit's Echo Fighter pops up in the Brawl section of the video because that's how numbers work, don't shoot me. Fittingly, Pit was my first figure, and Dark Pit is my most recent. 
I got him off AmiAmi, which I highly recommend using. They had pre-orders up for a re-release of Pit and Dark Pit, who outside of that had been almost impossible to get for a good price since release. I like him enough that I even went to the trouble of copy-pasting in a little Epsilon symbol for the top left. Clearly, I have spared no expense with this video. Another childhood figure next with Charizard, who you can look at as a placeholder really. I have the Jasper's Charizard on pre-order at the moment, but I already delayed this video once to wait for a figure. I couldn't wait forever. <laughs> If you're watching this in a year that isn't 2021, then first of all, hello, how nice of you. Um, but secondly, I'll have a link on screen right now if there's a new updated collection video. On to Jack specific Snacko the Hodgehog. Even though we all rag on the lack of the elbow joints, it's such a joy to have a Sonic in scale with the rest of these figures. I do have the Sonic Nendroid somewhere, but I'm really not a fan of it, so this is the definitive Sonic in this scale for me. SH Figure Arts Lucario is a pretty cool figure and you can lean him on his tail to get him to stand up, without the need for a stand, so that's always a plus. The articulation on his hair, uh, ear, uh, dangly things, whatever those are, the articulation on those is a great touch and allow you to give a real sense of motion in animation, similarly to the articulation of Link's hat. Great for stop motion. Toon Link is one of those characters that works so perfectly with an Android style. Often they're a cool option for a more chibi cute version of a character, but here it works super well as a mix between that style and how he looks in-game. Really love. Opening up the Smash 4 section, we have Super Fighting Robot, Mega Man. This is another D-Arts one I picked up very early on in my collecting years. There are quite a few options for Mega Man figures, but I went for this one mainly due to the other figures included. You've got to have Rush in there. Which brings us on to the reason that this video didn't come out earlier in the year, the brand new SH Fig Arts Pac-Man. I bought him from Ami Ami in the same order as Dark Pit, and although not as impressive as that figure, he's still a great addition to the collection for a pretty affordable price. From a more budget figure to a super high quality one, Cloud Strife is probably my favourite figure I own. I don't even need to say much because just look at him. This is this Kingdom Hearts 1 design which is sold as the Another Form variant, I think, so they don't have to give any money to Mickey Mouse. <laughs> it's my favourite design for Cloud personally, but it also helps that it's the closest to scaling with the rest of the roster out of the other Cloud figures on the market, even if it doesn't quite work. Our first figure from Ultimate, the World of Nintendo Inkling Gal, is a figure that looks completely passable until she turns her head. I don't know why on earth they've decided to put the copyright information there, but it's certainly a choice. There's a far superior figma out there, but this collecting thing is expensive, so we'll chuck that in the would love to have pile alongside Samus. Nendoroid Isabel is just cute. There's not much else I need to say. Good smile rarely miss with these figures, and the sculpt is just great. I don't play Animal Crossing, but this was a Christmas present from my girlfriend who was very invested in the game last year. So on her behalf, I'll take this moment to call on Good Smile to make a Joey figure. Joey for Smash. Piranha Plant is where I'm stretching this a bit. <laughs> this was an accessory in one of the SH Figure Arts Mario packs, and it's just nice to have. Like I said, I wish they continued the line and went on to make a Peach, Toad, Wario, so many possibilities, but I'm grateful for what we did get. On to Funny Minecraft Man as we slowly catch up on the end of the roster. As with Metroid, I've never played Minecraft, but I just find Steve hilarious to look at, and I love that he's in Smash. He's a little big, but that almost makes it funnier. I don't know. I just think he's neat. I just think they're neat. Finishing on a big one with Sephiroth. Just as with Cloud, this is his Kingdom Hearts 1 design, or another form variant, as he's sold. And you can just see the quality. I especially love the paintwork on his wing. I could just look at these two figures for hours, and in fact I have. But did I say finishing with this figure? <laughs> no, no, no. Sora and Waluigi come in as combined fighter number 82. This is what is known as manifesting destiny. By placing them here, I'm forcing the universe to make it happen. Now, if you're watching this in the future, you're probably laughing or crying at this, but there's an infinitesimally small chance that I'm a prophet, and this is the future. And what did Batman say about if there's a 1% chance? We have to take it as an absolute certainty. Exactly. That's exactly what he said. Which brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this look into my collection. So here's the obligatory group shot which took ages to set up. With the exception of Dark Bit and Pac-Man, you can find every single one of these figures in my Sonic vs Mario video, set in the fictional Club Nintendo where the roster spends their free time. So make sure to give that video a watch, and leave a like and comment on this video if you've made it this far. I've been Dr. Pikachu, thank you for watching.